British Prime Minister Theresa May has said it is wrong for the president to have done this. That was Molly Hunter reporting. To discuss, let's bring in Evan Bernstein, the New York Regional Director for the Anti-Defamation League. Evan, thanks for being on I-24 News. The Thank first you. thing you thought when you heard that President Trump tw retweeted these tweets was what? It was just, you know, we were very disturbed by, by the tweets and the retweets. And, you know, again, it's an, an unfortunate series of, of tweeting that he's done now for an extended period of time where he's, you know, really uh, pushing hate in a way that we're just surprised to see from the president of the United States. The, the ADL, the, the D is for defamation, right? right? I mean, it's not just a Jewish organization. Yeah. It's, it's, it's about the defamation, defamation of everyone. Uh, what kind of a role now do groups like the ADL play in going after it? They couldn't do it when he was a candidate, and now he's a president, and the behavior has, con has continued. What kind of an organized role is there? I think, you know, for us is to continue to be a voice, uh, you know, in the community to say, you know, call this out. When something happens like this, where there's such an egregious act by the president, you know, and with these tweets and retweeting someone from a neo-fascist group who is, you know, uh, arrested for hate crime of harassing a Muslim woman in, 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 in Britain, I think it's our job to continuously call this out and to bring awareness to the public and say that, you know, this is not going to be accepted. And I think from there also uh, to do as much as we can in schools, because this, this kind of activity from the president is allowing for normalcy uh, of, of kind of bullying speech and hate speech that we're seeing online, uh, and we can't let that happen. You know, that's so interesting. Are there numbers that your organization has called that show that there is among, in schools and among youth, a sort of a permissiveness about this that didn't exist before? Well, you know, we've certainly seen an uptick in anti-Semitic incidents, uh, not only here in New York, but across the country, you know, over 60% increase of anti-Semitic incidents uh, over the over same time last year. Uh, we saw 100% increase in uh, anti-Semitic harassment in schools. Uh, you know, we're, we're studying harassment through the anti-Semitic lens. Through our partners in our community uh, across the country, we, we've seen uh, and heard uh, from specific stories about how you know, certain groups are just experiencing such unbelievable hate. You know, just uh, this week, the FBI came out with new numbers about the number of uh, Muslim uh, incidents, hate crimes, and, and the numbers are, are, are staggering, you know, compared to the word last year. And I think that's showing that other groups are being affected, not just the Jewish community, but other groups as well. Muslim, the Hispanic community, we're now seeing that uh, as well. And talk to me a little bit about it. I mean, one of the things you just mentioned was people who do what you do in other communities, not just the anti-Semitic community. Give people an idea of how you work together with other advocacy groups, for example, groups that advocate for Muslims? You know, for us, it's about staying together. So right after the unfortunate incident uh, that took place here in New York, uh, you know, the terrorist attack, uh, you know, we stood together the next day, the ADL did, along with other Muslim leaders and other faith-based leaders to show solidarity because we saw already an uptick just online against the Muslim community here uh, in America because of what took place. And I think it's about staying together and showing that there can be unity and that not one person defines an entire group of people. And I think that's something that we can consistently do uh, and, and have to do. And it's unfortunate that the president is not, is not necessarily helping us uh, uh, with that message. But are there, if you can't get to the president, who do you go to with this message? Do you go to the, the Congress? Do you go to uh, people who uh, act on behalf of the president? I, I think you ha it's, it's all of the above. I think it's, it's all the way down from the federal level all the way to the local elected level. I think it's about uh, getting people to understand that this behavior and this kind of language and rhetoric is not helpful. Uh, and it actually creates all kinds of issues, not only, at the, again, at the federal level, but also at the local level. When it's affecting elementary schools and, and junior highs across the United States, it's something that we need to get everybody activated and engaged in. And, and what about the stereotyping, the presumption that, for example, a shooter in a church or a shooter in a hotel is Muslim? Uh, and, 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 you know, Jews have dealt with stereotypes for, sure. for quite a while. What do you do in, in terms of education to get people to change their minds about hearing something like that? I think it's about, you know, again, it's about anti bias training the schools, and we're the number one partner for the DOE here in New York. I, I think it's about showing people that this, these are not, uh, this is not the case for, you know, one individual, again, does not, is not create the entire picture for, for a group. And I think it's about, you know, taking people, showing them, exposing them. I would love to know whether or not you know, President Trump has really spent time in, in Muslim American communities and gotten to know the leadership and gotten to know the families and, and you know, been there for breakfast Ramadan and be able to experience what these people are like because they're, they're great Americans. And, and again, you know, we have to be worried about radical Islamic extremism. We have to be worried about white, you know, alt-right extremism, uh, the Klan. But, but again, you can't put everybody into the same uh, into the same bowl, and, 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 and it's just such a wrong thing, for, and we have to do everything we can.
can't push back on that. Gavin Bernstein, the work that you and your organization do has gotten tougher under this administration. Thanks okay. for being with us tonight. In tech, the holiday shopping season is officially underway. Correspondent Andrew Anger has a look at some of the hottest gadgets on the market. It's square, it's tiny, and with it, you'll never lose items again. Four. The Tile is one of the most popular Bluetooth-enabled trackers. Now the tiny white squares get a stylish and sporty look, plus greater range. If you misplace your item, just open up the Tile app on your smartphone, and you'll be able to quickly track it down. You can even get other Tile users to find your things if you're out of range. You'll be able to find it no matter what. Three. It's called sous vide, and this precision temperature water bath cooking technique is all the rage now. So with the Anova Precision Cooker, you'll be able to get professional chef results easily at home, all through its special app. We make it super easy and super affordable for you to enjoy a restaurant quality meal in your home. Believe it or not, this Anova Precision Cooker actually has Wi-Fi built in, which means you can actually set this up with food in it before you go to work then activate it while you're at work, and by the time you get home, you'll have a perfectly cooked meal. Two. It's small and mighty. The Spark from DJI is a feature-packed drone that can get cinematic aerials at the touch of a button on a smartphone app. But you don't even need a controller. You can use special hand gestures to command the Spark. You can even fool your friends saying you have Star Wars Jedi-like mind control. Or like a Jedi wannabe in a Jedi-like bathrobe. Still though, it's very cool. To get it to land, I put my hand under it, it recognizes that my hand is below it, it lands, and once it's settled, it's right back in your hand. Our thanks to Andrew Anger for that report. Ahead, an emotional reunion between one man and the dog he thought was lost forever. I love this story.